when something is good, then the credit has to go there. And this is exactly the case with BMW F850GS, which with this newest generation, so upgraded from F800GS, is now a, what I call, complete motorcycle. I am VTOLD and I must say that in my eyes, the medium GS used to be kind of more of a toy or a fun bike rather than a serious adventure motorcycle. I would never think that I would necessarily spend my own money on it as it was not the perfect tutor and it still is not, but it wasn't too much fun either. Where it was scoring was off-roading with fairly low weight, good balancing, wide handlebar and a big 21 inch front wheel. But now, with this newest generation and a new name, now F850GS, I believe it is finally fun enough because of the power upgrade. It's up from 85 horsepower to 95 horsepower. And this is also thanks to more engine displacement. The previous 800GS had 798 cubic centimeters of uh, engine displacement, and this new one, 850GS, has 853 cubic centimeters. Torque is also up from 82 Newton meters to 92 Newton meters, so around 11% more than before. I believe that I can feel it. I'm convinced I can. With this fairly light GS being 233 kilograms with tank full of fuel, it actually sounds more heavy than it feels. Really, it's not super heavy, but on the other hand, it's only 25 kilograms less than the bigger brother, the, the, the big boy, the R1250GS. Now, it rides in a way that I wouldn't say that it's lacking performance, finally, for what it is supposed to do, what it's meant to do. But what is it meant to do, actually, then? F850GS and its predecessor is a motorcycle that works great in any kind of circumstances as long as you are riding solo, so without a passenger. It can be city riding where it does great and gives plenty of confidence, but it doesn't encourage you to race sports cars and it would lose to many of them. But it's to be taken out for a chilly and relaxing ride summer around. You can take it to a forest to, to, to ride on some fields doing a bit of off-roading or just exploring any kinds of places you want. Some call it a bigger dirt bike and I do get this idea and I think it could work this way and surely you can do some small trip but I wouldn't want to ride it between the cities because it lacks wind protection and some high speed performance. Yes it's still somehow not feeling very tough once speeds are higher so that may be bothering some of you guys. I feel like some other bikes with similar power and torque figures provide a little bit perhaps more performance, but if we would actually look at the numbers and acceleration times, perhaps they would be very, very similar. Feeling is an important part of that too, so we cannot ignore it. And for those mentioned purposes, I think it's going to be fantastic. And look, I, I still could ride with the throttle wide open when accelerating, even in the city. But now I feel that, that there are some emotions behind it there. And they weren't there that much before. There's not much adrenaline when accelerating, however. So if you want that, if you are looking for that, then you will need the R1250GS. It's, it's not as powerful as some other bikes in the category as well. Uh, but with 143 newton meters of torque, it kicks ass at any gear. It's, it's just awesome and brings a lot of joy in just playing with its performance. And here you will not find it in the 850. It's fine, it's not a disadvantage, it's just different. Now, if R1250 GS wouldn't be enough for you, then the newest S1000XR will be. Yeah, no worries. This one, when kept at higher RPM, is, let me say, it, it's pure adrenaline. <laughs> What about you guys? Do you care about the performance in this category of motorcycles? Please let me know in the comments. Now, back to the 850 alone, just look at the front wheel being 21 inches and 90 by 90, so pretty, pretty narrow with a pretty high profile. This tells us that BMW wants to be confident that this medium GS will do good off the road. And yes, it feels confident, just like the previous 800 then GS. If off-roading is what you want, 
consider the adventure version right from the beginning and you've got to be quite tall actually to be able to handle it i'm one meter 83 centimeters tall and think that for riders below one meter 80 centimeters it may be a little bit too much of a struggle with an adventure especially off the road where certain um, terrain is uneven and, and, and from time to time you have to support yourselves with a leg now if your leg is too short your back has to compensate for it. If it cannot, you crash every single time. <laughs> now it seems to sound a bit better, this bike, at higher RPM, which is nice. It's still not sounding like a V2 engine, since it's an inline two-cylinder engine here. For this type of bike, I think it's fine. It's generally very, very quiet. At some point, once I um, arrived to the dealership, I was approached by an owner of a previous F800GS, which was standing right, um, right next to me. And he claimed that there was some rattling noise in this new one that isn't there in his, in the old one, in the 800. Then he started his bike and well, was actually right. Mine 850 was rattling and his 800 was not. Maybe that's the sound of more power in the new one. I also like the adjustable windscreen here that you get because you can easily adjust it even while riding. It just takes a second and changes the windstream noticeably. Regardless of the position, there is no turbulence generated by it that would hit my helmet. And that's hard to achieve for many manufacturers and it's done properly here. As for sitting on the 850, it's rather tall with a seat at 86 centimeters from the ground. The position is very nice and immediately makes you feel that you are in control. The handlebar is wide enough, but it's not too wide. And at the right distance and at the right height from the seat for a rider of my size, so it suited me very, very, very well. Having the seat high makes you control the bike very well with your legs because footrests are quite low, your legs are stretched nicely, they don't get tired and you can apply as much pressure on the footrests as you like because of all that. Sitting high also makes you see far ahead and also to be able to plan what you want to do as you're looking above most of the cars on the road today that's a very cool feeling and this particular 40 years anniversary edition it looks in a very very decent way with those golden cross spoke rims and you can immediately see that it's special if you have a chance if you have a possibility then i do suggest that you go for those special versions it's always something different something that differentiates you from many 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 others if you like that if you want to blend in then of course don't do it now i really like the suspension i also liked the previous one and how it was handling it it feels very light and eager to do what you wanted to do and this is how a motorcycle should be you shouldn't need to fight then you don't need to do that at any point with either 800 and 850 gs it's really comfortable too partially thanks to those long wheel travels both front and rear and so not much is making it lose its composure on the other hand despite being rather soft it's not wobbly and not shaky and always feels right this is the feeling that i didn't have on the f900 xr on the other hand that one was shaky it was unstable that one didn't give me as much confidence as this one this gs feels totally different it really feels just right and comfortable. There are motorcycles, you know, even BMWs that are soft in the beginning of suspension travel, and then at some point they try to break your spine. And that's the R1250RT, for example, which is behaving like this. The medium GS has conventional suspension, unlike the big GS. So the A50 doesn't have the famous 
front telelever suspension that prevents diving and so stopping at a traffic light like, makes it behave like a boat so it's basically something like this also when you when you take off it's, it's, it's becoming like an old mercedes just, and going like this it's it's totally different than in BMW's mo motorcycles with telelever like this big GS or RT however the conventional setup may work better when off-roading because it actually lets the front wheel to compress to compress in a slightly different manner and roll over soft obstacles rather than trying to go through them. Then there is F850 GS Adventure and the previous F800 GS Adventure that have the most comfortable suspension that I have ever experienced in any motorcycle in my life. The medium GS Adventure, it just flies over bumps and this is amazing and it also gives you this feeling of being light. The 850 and 800 GS Adventure, they are like, you know, like a Rolls Royce of motorcycles in terms of suspension smoothness. Imagine not having to slow down before speed bumps as the bike suspension just soaks them almost completely and it gently just waves up and down and that's it. It's amazing. If, if you are tall or tall and willing to do off-roading, then get yourself an F850 GS Adventure, as that suspension is one of the, one of the world's wonders. In the regular one, you will feel some larger bumps. Obviously, you will because it doesn't have such capabilities as an adventure one. However, it's going to be much better than regular motorcycles like naked bikes or even the mentioned RT, as this bike was able to absorb the 850 regular one, was able to absorb one specifically demanding road obstacle in a safe and comfortable way, while for example, naked bike S1000R or the touring bike, the 1250 R1250 RT, in that same spot, in exact same spot, have sent me flying, literally flying out of my seat and fall back on that seat with all my weight. They, just because of being stiffer with much less wheel travel, my back hurts even, even thinking about that situation. And as for equipment, man, I'm, I'm impressed as you can get pretty much everything that's available there in other BMW motorcycles, including much more expensive ones like the Big GS or the RT. There can be, there can even be a, a quick shifter for you, then you don't need to use clutch when changing gears up and down. It can be very useful with this engine and rather short gears, as there will be a lot of playing with the transmission to keep the engine in an optimal RPM range to ride in an exciting way, if that's what you like. It's not very flexible at higher gears like 4th, 5th and 6th and you will need to downshift when overtaking some other vehicles definitely. No doubt that the 850 is well balanced, not as well perhaps as the bigger GS. I actually suspect higher center of gravity being the cause. Anyway, it made me feel like at home right at the moment when I sat on it, you know, because of that high position and wide handlebar. But the seat itself seemed to be angled forward a little bit too much. And because of that, when the bike and myself were shaking on the bumpy roads, I would slide more and more forward on that seat and that, at the moment of colliding with the fuel tank eventually, it was starting to worry me a little bit. So putting it simply, it could do a lot of harm to my future children if I wouldn't slide back again. This would, this would keep happening over and over. So. If that happens to you, just get yourself a different seat because over time it gets annoying and if you have something to lose like I do, <laughs> then just protect yourself in case. I don't understand why it's designed this way in a motorcycle that is still below 100 horsepower and is not meant to be used on a racetrack where when accelerating with all it's got, it would make the rider slide further and further back. Another thing that I wanted to mention is that the build quality is great and everything almost works smoothly. You can just feel quality there. Now I found one issue with the clutch lever, which was a bit loose, you know, moving up and down. And when being pulled, it would generate a strange click, like I, I could feel it, I definitely could feel it. I'm not sure if it's because of the bike having a quick shifter. It definitely was there and I didn't like it since I would focus on it every time, wondering if it's normal or not. So a slight downside here.
I gotta tell you, if it's perfect, you're just accepting it. If there's something wrong, it just freaking bothers you. And that bloody clutch was bothering me. Anyway, I suggest you check some units without the quick shifter to see if they do that too. And obviously now for this BMW 850GS, there is ABS, there is traction control, there are riding modes, there is fancy digital screen, which actually convinces me more and more every time I see it, just because of the nice quality graphics, very good visibility, actually at all times and plenty of information available there i just will never like the rev counter in the form of this uh, quasi horizontal or any other kind of stripe or whatever you call it i just like seeing a needle going around even if it was digital rolls royce does that why, why bmw cannot do it or give us a choice one like this and one with two digital or at least one uh, digital gauge. There is also a tire pressure system which proved to be useful as thanks to it I was able to verify that the bike actually, the one that I was riding, had a bit too little air pressure in the front tire. It's just a slight pity that at 1.9 bar, which isn't actually crazy bad, but it's too low. It's a pity that I was warned by the bystanders who were watching me uh, rolling the bike over a slight bump, just, just pushing it when parking and not by the bike itself still it saved me a trip to the petrol station after being noticed check that before you go and and ride anything as long as it's bmw you're gonna see for every wheel specifically precise numbers in terms of uh, air pressure gs has also cruise control it has usb power outlet in a very convenient place because it's right next to the screen there are also heated grips keyless access which i love as we don't need to insert the key into the ignition to switch the bike on or off and even to open the fuel cap which is brilliant and you just keep it in your pocket that's it there is also an LED front light, which is a very good improvement for this model comparing to the previous one, since in terms of physical size, its lights are rather and were rather small. And so having a stronger source of light is good both for safety reasons, so other drivers seeing it in traffic, and also in terms of giving you more light if you're riding after dark. This is also electronically adjustable suspension, ESA, SA. This is also a good old chain drive here. The cheapest, the lightest, and the most annoying solution out of them all. What I hate are the small mirrors here. Man, I, I, I really don't like them for being that small. Yes, they look nice, but I would much rather know if I can change the lane without turning my head necessarily. I actually do that anyway, but I would prefer to know that most of the times I'm just going to see enough in my mirror. That's why they are there after all, right? So this is the case of most BMW bikes nowadays, and thankfully they can be easily replaced those mirrors with anything else that will fit. The fuel tank is 15 liters, which is not much, but these bikes are quite fuel efficient. And also, this is another sign that it's not necessarily meant to be used as a super long distance traveler, super long distance motorcycle. The adventure version of it has 23 liters, which is not incredible, but that's plenty. That's more than the regular R1250 GS, which has 20 liters then the adventure the big adventure has 30 liters not that that's like a freaking boat it can go for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of kilometers overall i'm happy with this generation of the medium gs and i'm gonna give it a solid 7 out of 10 on vtol's recommendation board i think that now there's enough performance in it to make a solo rider have fun not only when off-roading but also in the city jungle and also commuting on short distances this suspension works really nicely even despite diving a lot when stopping the transmission is okay with this small exception for a quite uh, hard to find neutral and i would say that the quick shifter makes up for that if you will the build quality is fantastic if you find an 850 which doesn't have a clutch lever uh, issue uh, of it being loose then it's absolutely flawless and perfect and amazing <laughs> so take this bike wherever you want and if it's not a place where you can ride at high speeds like 140 kilometers per hour and above then it will do whatever you want it to do let me know how often you use all the bikes available power anyway this one is going to be very good off the road as it's easy to control and feels light just 
watch your balls when you are off-roading and jumping up and down so that you don't jump on something that you don't want to jump on. 